So I had this picture of a poppy and I wanted to have a go at drawing it using pigment markers and try and make some adjustments from some of the previous drawings of flowers I've done with them. So the first thing that I do is sketch it out with the pencil. I'm using a 2B pencil here and I was hoping that the pencil lines were going to show up a lot darker but they're really light and I just can't seem to get out of that kind of watercolour artist's kind of mentality of drawing really, really pale pencil lines. So with the pencil lines done, I start on the bottom left hand side of the poppy. I thought about starting on the top right where the petals are more interesting and kind of fun to draw. Um, but I'm right handed and I didn't want to smudge the work as I move back over towards the left hand side. So I thought play it safe and start with magenta red shade on the bottom left hand um, petal. And here you can see me after putting on the magenta, I'm now blending it using the white blender pen. And I'm trying to keep it quite bold and expressive, which is why I'm using the thick chisel nib rather than the fine little um, tip on the white blender, because I want it to have kind of big, bold kind of strokes to this. Um, whereas the last time I used the pigment markers on the flower picture, I did it quite small and used a very, very fine nib, which was okay, but I wanted a different look this time around. So going in a bit closer this time, uh, you can see me doing this petal using the magenta red shade again, and I'm trying to be a bit more um, quick and decisive uh, with the strokes that I'm using. Again, I'm using the chisel nib, not the fine nib, but you know, with the chisel nib, you turn it, twist it on the side, you get a nice fine line with it anyway. So you can kind of multitask with this one. But I'm trying to put in big, thick, and, and sort of bolder strokes, not getting too fussy and too detailed with it. Because I want this, like I said, to be more expressive. So when I start to do the uh, blending with the white blender pen, Again, I'm trying to do um, almost kind of one stroke or to not pick the, the blender pen off the surface of the paper, leaving lots of little dashy strokes. I want to try and do it in one big fat fluid stroke that blends the magenta red shade in. I think I'm trying to do this kind of like very fluid one stroke kind of blending with the white blender pen here because the first picture that I did with the pigment markers, the yellow rose, the the kind of strokes of the pen were really noticeable, so I wanted to do something that was uh, a little bit more clean and confident than that. So as I speed up this section, it's just because it's showing the exact same kind of technique as I've just showed you in real time. So I put on the magenta red shade, uh, and then I try and do those one kind of stroke with the, the blender pen to just get those kind of pinks and those kind of reds going on. I think I'm getting a bit more confident with the white blender as well, so that when I'm just using one color here, I'm using the white blender pen to get a whole bunch of different tones of that color out. And it really just shows that even when you're just using one color, you can get such a range of different shades using the white blender. So with the, uh, the basic kind of colors done on the petals, what I turned my attention to then was the interior and those really dark patches that you get in the middle of poppies. So I thought what I'd try and do here is blend a green and also the magenta red shade that I've been using to try and get some kind of a brown. I sort of, because it's a magenta red shade, I thought, well, you know, mixing red and green should give me a brown kind of color, uh, which I could use as a base and it would look darker than the kind of red pinks that I've done in the background. So you can see me blending emerald and then putting uh, magenta red shade on top of it and it looked a bit too red. So I went back in here with the emerald and started to add that on top and this didn't really work because the pigment from the, the emerald, you can see it starts to lift up and push the uh, magenta red shade around. So what I ended up with was kind of like paler patches when I was looking for a dark patch in the center of this, this kind of dark shadowy area inside the poppy. So after I used the emerald, I had to sort of tweak it and change my idea. And I picked out a warm gray number five and I decided to slap that over the top. So it's a fourth layer here. But I put this on top after waiting for the previous ones to dry and this gave me the kind of darkness on top that I wanted but I left the edges so the edges were still just that blend of emerald and um, um, magenta red shade together so it's got kind of a two-tone to this kind of dark shadow inside the poppy. That blend and combination of colors seemed to work fine. So I did all the other sort of shadow areas inside the, the middle of the poppy with those. So then I had to turn my attention to the seed pod and I thought, well, it's similar kind of tones, so I'll use similar colors. So I used the magenta red shade again. You can see me then putting on emerald on top of it to get that kind of mid kind of darkish kind of color. And then, yep, I went back to the uh, warm gray number five that had worked well on those uh, dark patches. And I used that to do the kind of uh, raised fuzzy kind of ridges that you get on the poppy seed pod in the middle. You know, they've got those kind of fuzzy bits that make it look almost like, you know, sort of an orange 
Um, then I get in there and I start using a little bit of the white blender pen just to try and blend some of these edges so that the, the warm grey number five doesn't look so flat. Uh, I can put in little sort of highlights using the white blender pen. And because the white blender pen picks up the colour that you're trying to blend it with, it sort of contaminates the tip. You never get a super bright white highlight out of it. You get a nice kind of like dulled kind of mid-tone, which is absolutely perfect because the poppy seed pod in the middle didn't have any kind of um, bright white highlights on it or any kind of bright highlights at all. So using the white blender to kind of blend in off the, the colours underneath plus the warm grey number five just added some slight highlights, nothing too heavy. Then this is one of those moments where I probably should have left the seed pod as it was. It was quite pale and I liked the way it was standing out, but I felt that it seemed darker in the reference photo I was using. So I go back in and I add some more uh, warm grey number five and a little bit more magenta red shade and a little bit more green so that when I then blend those together with the, the white blender pen that it will take on a slightly darker look to it and kind of not stand out as much as it does now and I'm, I'm still unsure of whether that was the right thing to do. I kind of liked the way that it looked when it was a bit paler uh, but then once I've added the colors and used the white blender pen it kind of dulled a little bit and, and sort of took it into the background with those other dark patches. But notice how earlier on I was saying how I wanted to draw this really expressively and already you can see me now eating my own words as I'm using the really fine tip on the white blender and I'm starting to get a bit detailed, a bit fussy and a bit noodly about it. So next up what I had to do was the bright little very delicate anthers, that um, these sort of little bits that you see on the end of the filaments and there's lots of these little dotted anthers all the way around the seed pod and I wanted them to be delicate, I wanted them to be subtle so what I started to do with the white blender pen was just put in little dots, little white dots all the way around. You can see they're kind of almost grey or half tone so they're not too bright but I did want some to stand out so here I start using a jelly roll um, white gel pen. I haven't really used one of these much before but I like this one because it had a very fine nib as opposed to the Pentella I've got that's got a thicker nib. So I wanted to just dot in some little bits of white around the grey type bits that I'd done with the, the white blender pen uh, just to give it kind of a two-tone but also little highlights on those anthers. So with most of the colour done on the poppy flower I decided to start doing the background around it so this would hopefully make it really stand out. So I decided to use the same emerald green that I've been using for those dark shadows in the middle and also the magenta red shade uh, to kind of bulk it up, darken it up a little bit. So I'm trying to do the shapes of the kind of spikyish green leaves in the background, those kind of fuzzy spiky green leaves that you get um, around a poppy, but also darkening it using the magenta red shade and then hopefully blending the two together to get a sort of a, a darkish, hopefully green to brown type of combo in the background. The reason I wanted to use the same two colors that I've used on most of the poppy flower to also do the colors in the background is because um, I've been told before that when I start doing backgrounds I use a completely different set of greens and, and there's almost a kind of a disconnect and there's not a lot of link between the background colors and the flower itself so I thought the best way to have that link between the, the flower and the background and not lose it is to kind of use the same colors um, but all, you know in different quantities in different kind of uh, amounts so that yes the background is nice and dark but it links with the same colors the magenta and the green that I've used on the poppy flower already. There is a bit of risk in what I'm doing because if it's something I haven't done before then it could go wrong but I don't want to keep doing things exactly the same way as I've always done them especially if, if people think that you know my work can be improved by suggesting doing a couple of these little tweaks or changes and actually I thought the blend of these um, two colors the emerald and the magenta red shade and then sort of topped up with a little bit of white blender to soften some of those edges was kind of a dull darkness in the background which actually served to make the uh, the pink poppy really jump out and be a lot stronger and brighter and be the colorful focus um, of the entire piece of work. You might be looking at this and completely disagreeing and been like, oh, I should have used totally different greens in the background. Oh, it's so dull. It's so muddy. Oh, it's, it's really destroying the effect of the poppy. I don't know, but if you do have any thoughts at all on it, then let me know in the comments below. That's what it's there for. Um, so what I decided to do is speed up this section because I just do the rest of the background in the same kind of choppy little, you know, short brush strokes 
of both emerald and magenta red shade and kind of blending them together in a kind of a rough and again expressive kind of way. I don't want to get too detailed with it, don't want it to be too noodly because then I could risk taking um, the focus away from the actual poppy in the foreground. So I keep it loose and very, very kind of like rough kind of brush strokey and rough kind of um, blending and shading, not trying to go for a smooth blend at all. And I also like the fact that a lot of the chisel nib that I'm using here, the, the strokes of that chisel nib end up showing through uh, and give you that kind of choppy, rough, you know, bits of leaves in the background kind of effect, hopefully. Well, that's the poppy drawing pretty much done now with the pigment markers. Let me know in the comments below uh, what you thought of the drawing in the video. If you found any of the techniques or approaches or hints that I use in this useful, then please let me know. It helps me for future videos, uh, you know, such as the single color and getting lots of different shades with the white blender pen or the color continuity between the colors in the background and the ones used on the flower. And if you like this one, you might want to check out some of the links below and you can see my journey from first go with pigment markers up to this current video right now. And please don't forget to share and subscribe if you liked it.